All right, today we're going to be working with GeoGebra again, and we're going to be looking at composition um, of transformations. So let me just kind of title these notes here. You can do the same with me. So composition of transformations. And basically what this is is combining, we've done three of them so far, translation, rotation, reflection. We're going to be combining some of these together and seeing what happens. Um, so the first one I want to look at is what happens when you reflect over two lines, two parallel lines. So maybe I'll kind of put another text box right down here. And so this is going to be reflections over parallel lines. And I might kind of move this whole thing down a little bit just so we can kind of get our Cancel. Sorry about that. Got to remember to grab the tool. Get these up out of the way a little bit. All right. So first, let's kind of create a shape. Um, I'm going to make a triangle over here somewhere this time. So I'm going to kind of go click, click, and click. Your points don't have to be exactly like mine, but they can be. Um, I do want to see the coordinates. So let's kind of hit control. Let's grab all these guys. And I'm going to right click and show my label and show my value. Boom, get rid of that. All right. So now what we're going to do is we are going to reflect this over two parallel lines. So let's first create a couple parallel lines. Um, and let's create one right here. So I'm just going to kind of use the, the line tool. And I'll just create one line there. And then, again, that was right here at the top. And then I'm going to create another one. That one was at x equals negative 2. Uh, maybe I'll put one over here at x equals. Let's go to 3. I'll click here and here somewhere. Boom. So now I have two parallel lines. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to reflect this triangle two different times once over each line. So the first thing is I'm going to reflect it over this line. So I'm going to go to my reflection tool and I'm going to reflect that shape over this line. Boom. And then now I'm going to reflect the new shape over the second line. So this shape over this line. Now it's kind of interesting where this thing ends up and this is kind of what our focus is going to be right now is there is a rule there's a rule that if you reflect a shape over two parallel lines if you look at the beginning and then you look at the final end all right so this is kind of the I'm going to just call this the pre-image actually let me put a text box in here ah what am I doing sorry man it's early so we're going to cancel. We're going to say pre-image. Okay. And that's this guy. I keep forgetting to click off of it. And then the final image, which is going to be right here. And I do not know why it keeps saying that. There we go. And I do final image now something you should notice you should notice that pretty much this first shape landing on the final shape it's a composite of two different reflections over parallel lines but it also ends up just being one of our basic three transformations so I want to kind of leave that down here for you to figure out was this a rotation was this a reflection or was this a translation? And it has something to do with the distance between these parallel lines. So that's kind of the hint I'm going to give you. So I'm going to kind of start this off, and I'd like you to kind of finish this. But I want you to put, when you reflect over two parallel lines, the result is just a... And I want you to write in here, is it a rotation, is it a reflection, is it a translation? 
And if it is, by how far or by how many degrees? I'm going to see if you can kind of figure that out. And remember, the clue is the distance between these parallel lines is part of the clue. All right, so you're going to finish that little piece. So that's part one. Go ahead and save this. And we are going to save this as a reflection over parallel lines. Boom. All right, and if you're stuck on this and you, you can't really see what's going on or you can't find a rule for it, just move on to the next one. And then uh, you can come back and explore this a little bit more later. So now I'm going to do a new sketch. And this time, we are going to do a reflection over intersecting lines. All right. So let's kind of put a new text box here. And I'll just kind of click. And this is a reflection over intersecting lines. And let's go ahead and let's get this out of the way here. Move it up a little bit. So I'll slide it up there. And again, let's pick a pick a spot for a shape. I don't know, maybe here, and here, and there. Wish I just in my settings could make it always show all these points, but and we're gonna go ahead and show label. Show the value. Boom, boom, boom. Get these out of the way a little bit. All right. So now I'm going to reflect over two lines that intersect. And I'm just going to kind of put my first line. I don't know. I'll put my first line right here. Oh, actually, I hit the reflection tool. So let's undo that. I want the line tool. And I want to go from there to here. And then my next one, I don't know, I'm going to kind of go from here to there. And there's my two lines I'm going to reflect over. So first thing is, I'm going to reflect this over the first line, then I'm going to reflect it over the second line. So let's go to our reflection tool. And I want to do this object over this line. And then I want to do this object over this line. Now it's kind of hard when it jumps on top of itself. So something I could do is I could play and I could move this a little bit. Maybe just to make it a little bit easier. I do kind of want to get a spot where my coordinates are perfect though. So, so now what I have is I have this point. I have this, this, uh, not point, this triangle that reflected over the first line and reflected over the second line. And again, there's actually a theorem or there's a rule that says that this shape, really, to get from the beginning to the final end, was really just one transformation. You know, we did two to make it. We did two reflections. But it was really just one, either translation, rotation, or one reflection. And what you're trying to figure out is, it has something to do with these two lines, and it has something to do with this point right here. All right? So something to do with this point, in these two lines. And I'll give you a hint, you might need to do the measuring tool to kind of figure out, um, I'll give you a, a bit, pretty big hint, that once you find the angle of those two lines, so from this dot to that dot to that dot, oh wow, I made a 45 degree angle. So I'm just gonna tell you that this angle right here, whatever angle these lines are, there's a relationship between how far this triangle ends up over to that other triangle. So that's kind of a kind of a little hint for you. And we're just going to write this one as um, I'll kind of start it off, and then you'll try to finish it. This is going to be the hardest part of the assignment. It's trying to finish these. Um, but when you reflect over two intersecting lines, the result is just a, and again, you're looking for a translation, a reflection, or a rotation, but it's not enough to just say that it's one of those three, but by how far, you know, how long was the translation, what was the direction, or how big was the rotation, um, 
or the reflection. So that's your task is to fill those in. And finally, the third one. The third one's more just about vocabulary. There's no rule to figure out. Um, so let's save this. This is a reflection over intersecting lines. Save. And last sketch, this one's going to go pretty quick. And this one is what is called a glide reflection. So this is just a pretty common composition. or com Composition is kind of like a combination. Um, a glide reflection. And all that a glide reflection is, it is a reflection and a translation but it's pretty common so they give it they give it its own name so let's just kind of do do that I'll make myself a triangle maybe I'll make this one over here boom we'll just pick an easy easy 90 degree triangle to make life a little simpler on ourselves and I'm gonna highlight these Boom, got our points now, get them out of the way. And a glide reflection is I'm going to reflect it first and then translate it. So let's, to do a reflection, we need a line. Um, let's just pick a line right here. The line x equals negative 1. Hey, why didn't it do a line? Undo, undo. I want a line from here to there. So this is the line x equals negative 1. And we're going to reflect this thing. So I want to reflect u over u. And then I actually want to now move this and translate it down. All right. So let's translate it. <clears throat> I don't know. We'll translate it straight down. So I need a vector to translate. Vector. And let's move it down. Oh, I don't know that far. What's that look like? Down. We'll go down seven. Seven's a nice number. So we're going to slide this down seven. So we're going to go to translate. Boom. Boom. And puts it down there. So I just wanted that in your vocabulary. A glide reflection will basically flip this and then slide. So kind of as, as a little reminder, glide reflection we're going to add on to this box. It is just a flip and a slide. All right. So that way, if I, <clears throat> if on our little assessment I ask you to perform a glide reflection, you know, reflect over the line x equals negative 1, and then by a vector of, you know, this vector would be the vector 0, negative 7. Maybe I should slap that in there. Let's name this vector. I wonder if they'd name it for me. Let me just do this. I'm going to try something here. Try to go to that vector. Now let's go to the settings. Show me a label. Uh, they just kind of call it. They just kind of call it U. Let's see if I can go into the. Now there's no settings for it. So I want to put vector notation. So I'm going to go ahead and make me a little text box. And we need to get into our, our fancy tools for this one, the latex formula. And vector. And right in there, this was, we didn't move left or right, so the first combination is 0. But then we get, did go down 7, so negative 7. Boom. So now we've shown our vector u, which is a 0, negative 7 vector. All right, so this kind of concludes notes. Actually, I guess I better save this here. So how can I close this box over there? Maybe i got to bring this out a little bit. I want to get rid of that. There we go. Let's 
kind of, oh, I got to get out of this box, I guess. Give me the select tool. For some reason, I'm clicking up here, and it's not letting me save, which I don't really know why. Well, I'd like you to save this one and call it Glide Reflection. I don't know if mine's is glitching or what, but I can't seem to, to name it the way that I'd like to because it's not letting me click on there. All right, so go ahead and save that, and that'll wrap it up for you.